Hello, Illumineers. Welcome to the first annual Lore Madness Tournament that pits glimmers from the existing Disney Lorecana library against each other in a month-long battle. You, the fans, will visit loremadness.com and vote weekly on each matchup to see your favorite cards move through the bracket. At the end of March, only one beloved character will be left standing. We have a wonderful panel of Lorecana creators to provide commentary and predictions on the matchups, like your favorite sports show. But we're not talking athletes, we're talking Disney. Stephanie, who do we have today to cover round one? Yeah, today we have with us the Illumiteers, Aaron and Liam, and we're so excited to have them join and uh, give them give us their commentary on some fun matchups we have. And we have, also have James, who is the creator of the Lore Madness website. He uh, works some amazing magic uh, to make voting easy and shareable, so we're super excited to jump in. Let's dive into it, shall we? We did our best to hide this from our guests to get their live reaction, but here is the 16 character bracket. Seated 1 through 16 based on a combination of hype for the card and overall love for the character themselves. We're so excited about this tournament because it captures the essence of Lorcana by imagining alternate realities where these cards interact, and we hope it sparks a lot of friendly debate amongst the community. Golly, look at that. Woohoo! Looks like Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Let's kick it off with the first round and the first match. Mickey Mouse versus Jumba. Now, let's be honest, uh, there are some really interesting matchups in this bracket, but this is probably the biggest landslide, arguably, uh, in terms of Jumba, we all love him, but he's seed 16 versus Mickey Mouse, a very iconic character. What do you all think? I mean, this is your classic first seed versus last seed matchup here. I mean, Jumba is beloved by some people uh, of the Stitch generation, but unfortunately for him, Mickey Mouse crosses all generations. And so I think Mickey Mouse has this in a landslide. Yeah, I mean, I think if you, uh, I feel like we have a little bit of a David and Goliath situation going on here. And to be honest, there are arguments for each of these being the Goliath. I mean, if you actually th thought about a mouse versus Jumba, like I would go with Jumba. However, this is not just any mouse. This is Mickey Mouse and he is the OG and therefore I'm going to have to go with Mickey. But get your votes in there, Jumba fans. Maybe he'll take it. I don't know. I know. I know. <laughs> Moving on to match two in the first round, we have a much closer race between Mulan and Aladdin. Um, now, what something that I noticed between these two is that I think they both represent sort of an early uh, exploration of Disney into other cultures, and uh, Mulan being Chinese culture, Aladdin being Middle Eastern culture, and it represents something really important to people who grew up without that representation. Having those characters mean something to them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I didn't actually, as you paired these two up, I wasn't thinking about that, but I can definitely see it. Um, between the two, I mean, just Mulan is such an amazing uh, human being and um, she's just such a powerful character. And so, and although Aladdin is great in his own right, I'm gonna have to go girl power and uh, vote Mulan with this one. I mean, what a fascinating matchup. And it's exactly what you'd expect at eight versus nine. Mm -hmm. Two characters from around the same time frame, both of whom, as you said, uh, represent different cultures around the world. And both are characters trying to pretend to be something else. Um, you have Prince Ali, who's disguising himself as a prince. And then you have Mulan, who's disguising herself as a soldier, uh, trying to be somebody that they're not. And at the end of the day, uh, they reveal who they are to the world and then are accepted for their true selves. So um, this is a, this is a, Fantastic matchup. At the end of the day, though, um, I'm gonna have to go with Aaron, and uh, I think uh, Mulan is my favorite to win this. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I, this is gonna be probably one of the tightest battles uh, that you'll see. I mean, she was trained by the Chinese military, so I yeah. think that I think that she's got it in the back. Perhaps. <laughs> Stephanie, what do you think? Yeah, I think I. I mean, so if this was a different Aladdin. If this was not Prince Ali, if we maybe had a Floodborne version of Aladdin or his normal Aladdin self, I may be tempted, depending on which Aladdin it is, but Prince Ali is kind of annoying. Uh, and we only get one cool song from him during that time. And it is a great song, but Mulan is just amazing. And she saves the world and the emperor. And I mean, Mushu, always wins in my book. And since we don't have Mushu yet, I'm gonna go with, yeah, Mulan, girl power forever. Yeah, and Christina them. Aguilera sings her song. So, you know, in the credits. Best. Yeah. 
Uh, and I think overall, the group all agrees that Mulan is the favorite amongst these two. I think it's going to be tight in terms of the voting, but I also have a personal just love for Mulan and what she stood for, the sacrifices she made. Uh, I'm all Mulan on this one. Yeah, she's such a powerful female, I feel like, role model. Like, I remember being a little girl seeing Mulan, and she was like a Disney, she wasn't a Disney princess, but she was like a female character in a Disney movie that you wanted to strive to be as a young girl because she was just so powerful and independent and had her own thoughts and ideas about things. All right, for match three, we have another interesting matchup between Aurora and Magic Mirror. Now, uh, Lumetiers, I know you all have a famous video diving into Aurora. I'm curious what your thoughts are here in this matchup. I mean, I, I think you can probably guess it. This is four versus 13 and we're gonna go, I think both of us with number four. Speak for yourself, I have my own thoughts. Oh. Right. <laughs> um, no, I'll start that out. Yeah, no. Um, no, I'm going to go and I will go with number four then. I mean, Magic Mirror is iconic and you may have some votes there from the older Disney generation who grew up with Snow White. Um, but uh, it's Aurora for me. Number one, she's you know a beloved character. But number two, out of everything we've seen in Lorcana so far, this Aurora breaks the mold of her original self. Not many people know the original Aurora only got 16 minutes of screen time in her own film. Not a lot of time for character development. So this one right here, I'm excited for. The magic mirror is the magic mirror, but this Aurora breaks the mold, and I think she's going to break out of this match uh, with a strong lead over magic mirror. Um, Yeah, I'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate here because although I know I'm probably fighting a losing battle, I mean, if you think about the magic mirror, the magic mirror, because of the magic mirror, the huntsman went and hunted down Snow White. I mean, this is a character who is, or an item, it's, the debate between character and item continues. This is an item that that knows knows what it wants and goes for it. Um, I love Aurora, do not get me wrong, one of my absolute favorite cards. Yes, we have an entire video about her and um, she, is, she is my girl and I will stand by her, but I might have to go with a magic mirror on this one just because there's it's so menacing and um yeah it does such damage in its film that i think um yeah i think i'm gonna go with it it's a bold move cotton i um i i am very torn on this matchup personally uh i see points from both ends um it's weird because in their films uh, Aurora actually in, in her film isn't that um, primary of a character. Uh, Magic Mirror is something you think of when you think of that movie. Um, and so the Magic Mirror tends to stick out a little bit, but it's still close. If I had to make a tiebreaker, I would actually start looking at the actual cards themselves for this one. And uh, I personally think Aurora and this style, her abilities, it's going to be something that's played more often than Magic Mirror. At least from my perspective, it feels like Magic Mirror might be a little clunky in terms of how much you have to pay to actually draw a single card. But we'll see. I'm going to go with uh, Aurora just slightly on this one. Moving into match four, we have two iconic villains matching up against each other, Hades and Captain Hook. Uh, this one's really tough for me personally, so I'm going to go ahead and defer to the group and let them talk first. Golly, I I'll tell you, for me, other than Mulan versus Aladdin, this is probably the tightest matchup that we see uh, in these brackets. Um, here you have villain on villain. You have iconic villain on iconic villain. Um, honestly, what this is going to come down to, I think, is the generation of people that are voting. Um, if you grew up with Hercules and you watched that a ton uh, as, a, as a kid, um, I think you're going to go for Hades. Uh, if you grew up with Peter Pan, I think you're going to vote for Hook. Um, this all comes down to who shows up to vote. Um, for me personally, I think I vote for Captain Hook. I think he has the edge only because he's been around longer and he's a little bit more iconic of a, of a character and is a appeared in numerous different iterations of of the peter pan franchise including hook um not a disney film but uh i can see either one running away with this um yeah uh agree with everything liam just said this i mean this for me is probably even harder than um mulan and aladdin um Going with my gut, I'm going to have to go with Captain Hook. He has been one of my favorite cards since the preview cards were released. And I continue to absolutely love him. And I just, I love this version of Hook because he looks so menacing. He's a little bit of a goof in the film itself um, and kind of comedic relief. But he, this is, this is a hook I do not want to cross. So I'm going to go with Captain Blade of Doom hand 
for this one. And if you don't get that reference, check out one of our videos. Yeah. To your to your last video, actually, Steel needs <laughs> love. So go ahead and uh, and check that yeah. out. <laughs> no, I, I'll just I'll add on. If if there was a tiebreaker here, it's looking at the cards and their actual abilities. Um, you know, Captain Hook is going to be a great card early, I think, on the board. Um, it's going to help you out. But Hades is probably the win condition uh, for a deck built around him. And so um, he's he's the king uh, where Captain Hook is more of a knight or a rook. And um, uh, I think that uh, that could be the tiebreaker here um, if we were looking for one. But are you still going with Captain Hook? I am. <laughs> <laughs> Moving into match five of the first round, we have a rather fun matchup just by the likelihood of the seeding. We have Elsa at number two versus Olaf at 15. Now, it could be obvious that Elsa would be a favorite because of where she is in terms of the iconography of Disney and princesses. But I think Olaf also has a huge audience and there's a chance, there's a chance that our audience is quirky enough to go the Olaf route over Elsa. I personally am biased because I think Elsa is my favorite card amongst the um, cards released so far. Yeah, I mean, Elsa versus Olaf, this matchup's cold. Um, <laughs> I think I agree with your assessment, James. I think that um, this, this on first blush, seems like it's Elsa hands down, but um, Olaf does have a huge fan base. And where there's a bajillion Disney princesses, there's only really one talking snowman. And so perhaps, perhaps Olaf can squeak out a win here. Um, for me, uh, what pushes me towards Elsa, and, and that's where I'm going to go with my vote, honestly, um, is this depiction of Elsa. Um, she has this spell book we've never seen before. The art is amazing. It's gorgeous. And uh, she just has this stoicism. Um, I think she's a fantastic character. And, and that's my vote. But to be honest, I think this could be a toss up. Yeah, I agree with Liam um, again, um, <laughs> much as it pains me to say. No, um, I, I agree with Liam. Uh, I absolutely love this art of Elsa's. It was probably um, up there again in my, my top two favorite cards when they released the original six preview cards. And I feel like you cannot go against the queen herself. I mean, you know, don't vote against Beyonce and don't vote against Elsa. Just let the queens be queens. And um, so I'm gonna go with Elsa on this one. Uh, now that you compared Elsa to Beyonce, it's over. Automatically Elsa wins. <laughs> I'm gonna have to just throw in my vote vote for Olaf. I love Olaf. I mean, he's just the best. Um, and yeah, I mean, we'll. I'm interested to see who wins this one. This is probably the most interesting matchup for me, honestly, because um, you have this like comedic relief, and then you have the queen sorcerer. But man, I love Olaf. So for match six, we have another interesting villain versus villain matchup. We have Maleficent, which I always struggle to spell, uh, and Scar, <laughs> representing two villains from very iconic films. What does the team think in terms of who might come out on top, who are your favorites, and why? This is so tough, because this is such an amazing version of both of these characters. Just Maleficent and her grandiosity, and um, also being one of, again, the original six cards is is just i think she's gonna be iconic in the lorcana space i however i'm gonna go with scar on this one um i grew up with the lion king i am of the lion king generation and scar just used to scare the bejesus out of me um and i think he is such a menacing villain um and is very conniving and gets what he wants and so um i'm gonna go with scar on this one Mm, Jeremy Irons is so good. Um, no, this is interesting. This is, you know, villain on villain. It's Storyborn versus Storyborn. Um, and uh, I think, I think Maleficent has the edge here. And here's, here's why. Um, in the last few years, Maleficent has gotten a little bit of a redemption uh, arc in several mm -hmm. movies. And in fact, Disney announced a new comic book, I think yesterday, um, with another uh, expanding uh, Maleficent story. And so when you look at Maleficent, I think you can find something there that appeals to you, whether you want to think of her as, a, as the mistress of evil, unleashing, quote unquote, the powers of hell in the original movie. Um, direct quote. Um, or if you want a, a sympathetic villain, uh, somebody who's been wronged and who is a villain due to pure circumstance, you can find that there as well. And so Maleficent has something for you. Mm -hmm. um, Scar is pretty one note evil. And uh, so I, I think Maleficent will have the edge. That is a good point. Um, but I think I'm gonna, uh, yeah, throw in my coin for Scar simply because I think his plot weaving and manipulation weaving abilities are far above 
a Maleficent, and I'm talking about the core Sleeping Beauty, not the the new the new storylines. Now you bring Angelina Jolie into this conversation. That's a different vote. That is a game changing. <laughs> that is a game changing conversation. Yes. If yes. we yeah, we just start adding in those new movies. I I will probably tip my vote, but for my I gotta like give myself some parameters to vote and. Yeah, for this one, I'm going with the core board. enemy. Yeah. Exactly. So we got to go with the original. Exactly. Angelina Jolie, different conversation. Yeah. Oh, such good movie. Such good movie. <laughs> I also want to take an opportunity to just like shout out the Locana team for card design. I just think they do a really good job at tying in the abilities of these cards to the story of the character. Uh, Scar in particular, it's like this, This uh, it's playing onto the whole, he kind of sits back and lets the hyenas and his minions sort of go and do the hard work. Uh, basically, he goes onto the board, he reduces uh, or weakens the opponent, and the hyenas go attack and take down the opponents themselves. I think that, in, in terms of design, is amazing. And I think everyone's been comparing Maleficent from the beginning, since it was released at D23, to like the Charizard of the set, in terms of it being super simple, uh, menacing, scary. Um, but I personally think the design of Scar is just really interesting, and I would love to see it played um, every time I see it. Yep, yeah. I'm going for Scar. And for match seven, we have the iconic Stitch versus the wardrobe from Beauty and the Beast. This seems to be closest to the landslide we saw with Jumbo and Mickey Mouse. But who knows? Maybe there's a bunch of closet wardrobe fans that would come out and vote for wardrobe in this in this matchup. Well, well done. Well done with that pun. <laughs> you know, it's it's another for me, it's another landslide. It's three versus 14. It's exactly what you'd expect. Stitch is a beloved character. Um, if you grew up, you know, in the in the aughts, um, you loved Stitch. He's endearing. Uh, he's dangerous. He's semi indestructible, except he he drowns um, uh, in in water. Um, the wardrobe, you know, it could get some sympathy votes. Here you have a character who, due to no fault of her own, was cursed and forced to live as a wardrobe with moths in her drawers for for years and years and years. So perhaps this is her chance to to shine. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, I, I think there's no way uh, that Stitch doesn't take this one. Hmm. Well, I'm coming out of the closet as a wardrobe fan, and I'm going with the wardrobe. I, I don't really have any reasoning be behind it outside of the fact that I absolutely love her in the movie. She is the one who like comforts um, Belle on her first night in the castle, and is just a really great really great friend in a really dark and scary place and although I love Stitch I just love the wardrobe I think she's wonderful and it might be because she's the new shiny thing and I'm super excited to see the rest of the Beauty and the Beast characters in the set so I'm going to go with the wardrobe hoping that where there is one there is many um but yeah I I love her nice I mean I'm hands down Stitch this is a landslide for me the Floodborne hero rock star take on Stitch is amazing. And we saw a little bit of that in the first movie when he was Elvis. Um, and just taking that further and making him with this flying v, v guitar is amazing. And I'm super excited to see what other Stitch cards are coming out. Yeah, I totally just wanted to make that closet pun. Uh, I'm definitely team Stitch. I almost named my dog Stitch. I, I love That's Stitch. That's awesome. <laughs> I was going to do a Stitch voice, but I didn't practice. This is my family. It's a little unbroken, but it's still good. Oh my god. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> and we are down to the final matchup, match eight of round one, which is between Robin Hood at seed six and Cruella at seed 11. Even though there's a little bit of a gap between these two, I'm curious if it'd be a tighter race than it might seem, uh, just based on, like Liam said earlier, generations and when they watch these films or not. Um, what do you all think? What's, what's your favorite of the two? This is absolutely a tighter race uh, than than six versus eleven. Uh, this one is neck and neck, uh, like Aladdin and Mulan. In fact, this might be tighter than Aladdin and Mulan. Here's the thing: if you grew up uh, in in you know in the 60s, 70s, I mean, Robin Hood is is iconic. Uh, you love it. You also love Cruella. But once again, Cruella had a redemption arc with Emma Stone coming in and trying to provide the newest generation, the youngest generation, with a new version of this character. And so Cruella appeals to multiple generations, um, and she's just an all-around great and evil character. Robin Hood is a fantastic character. I love him to death. I love that movie. But we've only seen one iteration of him, and um, at the end of the day, I think that's going to put Cruella over the top. Um, I'm going for an upset here, 11 over number 6. I think Cruella is going to take this over Robin Hood. You're forgetting the Kevin Costner movie. 
Or Russell Crowe. Yeah, it's not not a fox. Uh, they have to be a fox, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I'm gonna go with Corella as well on on this one. Um, I I love the artwork throughout the entire 101 Dalmatians film. Um, and I, I just thought it was such a unique style for Disney at the time. And I continue to love um, the artwork on this card. I love how Cruella doesn't have like a cigarette in her hand, but this like green smoke evokes that kind of mystery around her and this kind of like evil elegance. Um, and so, yeah, I think I'm going to go go with Cruella. Yeah. If she doesn't scare you, no evil thing will. I'll be honest, um, I am going to be kind of biased and maybe uh, make a bunch of Disney fans angry. Um, I grew up maybe not being into um, 101 Dalmatians because of Cruella and she kind of turned me off and scared me. And so I never rewatched it uh, as an adult or as an older person, human being. Uh, Robin Hood has always had a soft place in my heart, had the VHS tape, watched it all the time. I love the concept of steal from the rich, give to the poor. I think that's just timeless. And so I'm personally gonna go with Robin Hood, but I totally get the love for Cruella. Well, we just want to thank Aaron and Liam, the Illumineers, for joining us uh, this week. We were super happy and lucky to have them on this show. Make sure that you get your votes in by Tuesday, March 6th at loremadness.com. We will then do a follow-up video for the Elite Eight and the next seating, and then uh, we'll have another round of voting then. So we will see you all in the next video.